Good afternoon, this is Todd Colvin coming to you from the floor of the CME Group. We are looking at FX and the Euro currency. It's on everybody's radar. We saw the Euro currency continue its bear trend. Uh, going back to mid-April, we've seen it just kind of get beat up, knocked lower against the dollar. Uh, you know, today it got as low as it's been since July of 2017, nearing the 115 handle. Likewise, we're looking for a target of 114, which would be the low from Jan 17 to the high of Feb 18. So that's kind of a, a little over a year range, uh, and we're, we're kind of getting back to that midpoint. We should find some support there, unless things don't improve. We'll talk about that in a sec. But right now, the bear trend continues, and doesn't look like anything's going to stop it, at least in the short term. And if you look at the dollar, the dollar's been very strong, and there's been a lot of accolades with maybe it's U.S. growth, the tax cuts, the Fed, uh, you, you know, other, other emerging market currencies, uh, you know, not being as strong or not finding favor. Uh, there's also been some, some risk unwind trades that I haven't talked about, but certainly the dollar has been strong uh, going back over the last month, month and a half, and maybe that was some smoke there. Uh, no, you know, we, we talked about it, but it, maybe there was no fire, but now we're starting to see a little bit of fire. So dollar strength, obviously the, the main reason for what we're seeing in the euro, but there's more. It's not just the dollar strength that we're seeing. And if you want to look, there's two things we'll talk about. We're going to talk about Italy and the ECB. Italy, boy, where do we start? Uh, you know, they've got the political unrest. You know, you've got the you've got the populist group now talking about may, maybe a referendum for Italy to leave the ECB or the European Union, excuse me, and that would be uh, catastrophic. The third largest economy. Uh, you know, you've seen what happened when when Great Britain tried it. Uh, you know, or, or is in the midst of it. It's taking a long time. A lot of a lot of untangling and whatnot. And that is uh, something that is still not completely finished. If, if it happened with Italy, you can only imagine the, ca the, the, uh, the ramifications, the ripple effects, what happens to their debt, what happens to their trade agreements and whatnot. It, it, it could be really, uh, it could be something and that could be the main, that's the main reason why we're seeing the decline in the euro today. However, the ECB is also on the hook here. If its growth numbers are not expected to be as strong, and especially if you start throwing in countries that are trying to maybe leave, maybe you know get out of their debt that they've that they've had, maybe get a Greece kind of a deal, uh, that is also going to hurt the ECB. Uh, and right now, the ECB doesn't know what to do. Can they cut rates? Well, doubtful. Uh, can they not raise them? Yeah, that's that's pretty much been the plan. And can they maybe slow the decline in their asset purchases, if that makes any sense? Yes, they can. So there's a couple of reasons, things they can do. But right now. Those are the reasons why you're seeing the decline in the euro. And if you look at it versus the dollar, it's just been, you know, since mid-April, it's just been two different directions. And it doesn't look like it's going to change anytime soon until we get some resolution. And sometimes resolution, whether good or bad, is a good thing because it takes the uncertainty off the table, something that we've seen here for quite a long time. You've noticed how dramatic the uncertainty is. If you go back to the middle of last week, 10-year Treasury notes were about 25 basis points higher. So this didn't really come out of left field. It's been really going on for the last week, but certainly we are now starting to feel the momentum of this move, not just in Europe, not just watching the euro currency, but we're also seeing inequities getting hit, risk assets across the board getting hit, and treasuries, which are finding favor for the first time in a long time, are putting in lower yields. So right now we're seeing uh, you know, this continuation of this trend. I don't think it ends tomorrow. I don't think it ends the next day, but certainly there's, there's going to be a light at the end of the tunnel. It's going to maybe have to wait until July or possibly later on this year when they do have those elections in Italy. That could be the catalyst to at least a resolution. I don't know if it means good or bad. It probably means more negative to the euro than positive, but resolution is good, I think, in cases like this. So Watch out for those long euro currency holders. They're going to be looking for the exits if they haven't already. This is Todd Colvin coming to you from the floor of the CME Group.